Kura Papanga this week. Um, we're right around Tai Happy, basically in the middle of nowhere, but it's really lovely. The campsite we're at is just wonderful. Um, there are some wild horses roaming around, which is really nice. You might, we might get interrupted by one because they come right up to the window and make their, their funny raspberry kind of noises. The kids and Chevelle have gone down to the river for a fish and I'm just here by myself because I'm not very well. Um, we haven't been posting very many videos lately because we haven't really been doing anything all that interesting. Um, we've been doing a lot of relaxing and playing with the kids and reconnecting as a family and just nothing really that we really wanted to share with you. So we haven't been posting any videos. We do hope to be posting them more regularly now and also we don't have very reliable internet access which is a it's been a problem but we're getting used to it <laughs> um so this week we're actually celebrating having been in the caravan for three whole months and we just wanted to share three life lessons that we have learned in our first three months of being in the caravan these are ordered in order of how kind of eye-opening they were to learn um if we if we went back to our old lives and living in uh living in a house again with day jobs and stuff like that these lessons could never really go unlearned number three uh there's no such thing as bad weather only inappropriate clothing that's a quote by someone i can't remember who maybe I'll look it up and put it in the description um, it's something I've always really believed in but I've really had to put it to the test these past few months we haven't had that much bad weather the weather has been really good to us but the days that have been bad you know we've got 15 square meters of indoor space and most of that's taken up by furniture um, there's not a lot of room and we get by on the days you know I'm not gonna send my kid running off outside in the rain when he's sick so on days like that when we have been stuck inside all day it's really trying but on days when when you can just put on some boots and a waterproof jacket and head on outside anyway and my kids are good kids they're really awesome kids they're reasonably well behaved and things like that but put up walls around them and they will begin to bounce off them sooner rather than later and I think all kids are like that and I think people get it in their heads that their kids are hyper or just maybe not good kids but actually I try and keep in my mind that it's actually the walls that are the problem. Hi everyone, we're here at Kurapapanga Kura this week. Um, we're right around Tai Happy, basically in the middle of nowhere, but it's really lovely. The campsite we're at is just wonderful. Um, there are some wild horses roaming around, which is really nice. You might, we might get interrupted by one because they come right up to the window and make their, their funny raspberry kind of noises. The kids and Chevelle have gone down to the river for a fish and I'm just here by myself because I'm not very well. Um, we haven't been posting very many videos lately because we haven't really been doing anything all that interesting. Um, we've been doing a lot of relaxing and playing with the kids and reconnecting as a family and just nothing really that we really wanted to share with you. So we haven't been posting any videos. We do hope to be posting them more regularly now and also we don't have very reliable internet access which is a... <sighs> It's been a problem, but we're getting used to it. <laughs> um, so this week we're actually celebrating having been in the caravan for three whole months. And we just wanted to share three life lessons that we have learned in our first three months of being in the caravan. These are ordered in order of how kind of eye-opening they were to learn. Um, if, we, if we went back to our old lives and living in... Uh, Living in a house again with day jobs and stuff like that, these lessons could never really go unlearned. Number three, 
three. Uh, there's no such thing as bad weather, only inappropriate clothing. That's a quote by someone, I can't remember who. Maybe I'll look it up and put it in the description. Um, it's something I've always really believed in, but I've really had to put it to the test these past few months. We haven't had that much bad weather. The weather has been really good to us. But the days that have been bad, you know, we've got 15 square meters of indoor space and most of that's taken up by furniture um there's not a lot of room and we get by on the days you know i'm not gonna send my kid running off outside in the rain when he's sick so on days like that when we have been stuck inside all day it's really trying but on days when when you can just put on some boots and a waterproof jacket and head on outside anyway and my kids are good kids they're really awesome kids they're reasonably well behaved and things like that but put up walls around them and they will begin to bounce off them sooner rather than later and I think all kids are like that and I think people get it in their heads that their kids are hyper or just maybe not good kids but actually I try and keep in my mind that it's actually the walls that are the problem because most kids if you send them outside they'll be fine. Number two I have learned what a dirty shirt really looks like. In a past life, I would have, when I was getting my kids ready for bed at night, I would have taken their old clothes that they wore that day and chucked them straight in the washing machine. And sometimes, I hate to say it, but I would do it in the morning as well with their pajamas. I would just take their pajamas and stick them in the wash. I now do all of my washing by hand in a bucket. It's not fun, but that's how I do it. If I were to wash every shirt that had only been worn, or pants or anything that had only been worn one time, first of all, we wouldn't have enough water to do it. There goes one of those horses. Um, we wouldn't have enough water to do it, and I would be bent over the bucket all day, you know? Um, and that leads into another thing. You know, you, you've only got so much water. You can't, like, we hold, I think we've got, 140 liters of water if I was to wash every day we wouldn't have we wouldn't have any water left you know you don't realize how much water you actually go through until you've only got a limited amount and I am shocked by how much water we go to go through 140 liters lasts us now about five days when we first moved into the caravan and we were just kind of you know learning um, we could get through that easily in two days a household that uses a washing machine and a dishwasher and things like that, I'm sure could get get through that in one day. I'm not sure. I'll look that up as well. But, you know, it's really eye-opening how much, how much you go through. And another thing, if you were to wash your clothes every day, they wear out faster. So you're throwing more stuff away. That's another thing we've learned. That's three lessons all crammed into one, isn't it? We make so much rubbish and you don't realize until you can't just chuck it in the outside bin and forget about it. We have to walk around towns and try and find bins big enough to try and fit all of our rubbish in because most of them only have like a hole this big to stop people doing exactly what we're trying to do. No, basically, the condensed version, the less you wash, the, more, the less water you use, the less waste you produce and the less stressed out mama is so it's better for everybody. From being in the caravan is that kids do not truly want or need more toys. If you saw our post conversion video you would have seen the kids little toy boxes. Um, they had like a just a Sistema box about this big each and that was for all of their toys. Um, we've now condensed that even further the kids now have one toy each. One. Tristan currently has a car, like a bigger, bigger car, and Heidi has got um, like a unicorn and a little fairy type thing. And that's all they have. We have a big box of Duplo that lives in the back of the ute for those days when they can't be outside the whole day. Um, but other than that, they've got one toy each. Oh, and they've also got like a ball for playing with outside and stuff like that. 
Um, and that's it. And I'm happy because there's no crap all over the floor all the time. The kids, you know, when we condensed their toys to move into the caravan, we noticed that they played more often, even though they had less stuff. Um, and now that we've condensed even more, we've seen that again. Like they just, they play with their one toy. And if they don't want to play with that one toy, they go and find something. They find toys where there didn't used to be toys before. And by that, I mean, um, Tristan found a stick and noticed that it looked a little bit like it had a handle. And so that was a sword. And so we got out the whittling knife and Cheval kind of carved it to make it look a little bit more like a sword. And now, hurrah, he's got a sword. And then he found one and, you know, oh, this one is kind of bent and it looks like a, it looks like my Nerf gun. So here we go. We've got Nerf guns. Um, Heidi is a bit more into playing pretend and stuff like that. So now instead of bringing me cups of tea and little biscuits from her tea party set, she'll stir up a puddle of soup and, you know, bring me little flowers that are cupcakes in her mind and things like that. They're the same games that they're playing. They're just going to find things and using their imagination rather than just picking up their toys to play it. The other thing we've noticed is that they actually play a lot more together rather than off on their own. And I understand that they need time off on their own, but they were playing off on their own, I guess, more than they were playing together. And now they play pretend um, and they share each other's games as well. So like Heidi will go off and, you know, be an explorer with Tristan and then Tristan will sit down and play um, families with Heidi and it's really nice. Another benefit of there not being very many toys is that there's less bickering. They, I think it's partially because they don't have so many things to bicker about and partially because they're actually bonding a lot. They were already really, really close, but now they're just as thick as thieves. And I'm not saying that it's cured sibling rivalry or any such thing like that. They still have days where they just, you know, want to be at each other's throats. But the times that they're just sitting and playing nicely together is definitely increased. It's more, there's more good than good days than bad days. Whereas before, sometimes it definitely felt like it was the other way around. They were always inseparable. It's just that sometimes they were inseparable good. And a lot of the time they were inseparable, you know, <laughs> with their, always trying to get their hands around one another's throats and things like that. Just regular, what you'd consider brother and sister stuff. But now, you know, they, they sleep in the same bed. Hyde doesn't want to sleep in her bed. They always want to camp out up in Tristan's bunk and... You know, it's really nice. Their, their bond has become a lot stronger because we removed the crap from their lives.